evening. I, my name is Pat St. Germain. I am the um, president of Fair Love Against Crime Team, which is our um, neighborhood. Can you hear me? Which is our neighborhood. Can you hear me now? <laughs> which is our neighborhood um, crime watch and uh, improvement group. Um, in the audience tonight, we have a few council members, um, and we also have our district counselor, Tim Rudd. We have Terrence Mercer. We have Mark Wildenhain. I th Am I missing anybody? OK. Um, so we thank you for coming out tonight to hear this, um, to kind of get a sense of what the people in Fairlawn are dealing with as you are. A lot are. of rats, <laughs> plain and simple. I'm sorry? A lot of rats. It's sickening, it's so to, to hear what, what's going on in this community. Um, so I'm just going to start with a few ground rules. Um, so we, we would ask you to please participate in the discussion. Um, but please raise your hand if you have something that you want to say. Don't just shout it out. Please don't speak over one another. One person talks at a time. We know that this is a hot button issue that we all feel very passionate about, and particularly people who live in this community. But please don't yell, swear, name call. It just clouds the message, and it, it diverts people's attention from what the real issues are. And there are some real issues here, so please feel free to discuss them, but please do so in a respectful way. Please also realize that we're in a church, okay? So have respect for this house of worship. Um, please also do not have side conversations. Those happen a lot at our meetings, but they're very distracting, and they also are very disrespectful. So please follow these rules, and I think we'll have a good meeting. But we, I definitely, once we do this presentation, we are really looking forward to people sharing their thoughts and questions and ideas. So, our two council at large um, people have just arrived, um, Elena Vasquez and Three. Mike Michael Rucho and uh, uh, Al Vitale. So we're going to start with just some history. Um, the current transfer station on Grotto Avenue has been operated for the past eight or nine years under a public-private partnership between the city and private operators. The most current operator is Waste Connections. They were formerly Link Environmental and before that, Waste Haulers. The public-private partnership changed Pawtucket's transfer station from a municipal service delivered by city employees to a profit-making business enterprise delivered by a private company. This arrangement over time has resulted in multiple detrimental effects on the Fairlawn community. Those of you who live in this area, that's no surprise to you. The mayor himself has acknowledged that the transfer station is overrun with rats and that Grotto Avenue is not an ideal spot for such an operation. Those are his words. They were uttered a couple of years ago when he wanted a transfer station to be built on Concord Street, which eventually got shot down. But at that time, he acknowledged that there were multiple issues at Grotto Avenue and that it was not an ideal spot for a transfer station. Nothing has changed in those two years other than it's probably gotten a little worse. So why now? Why are we looking at these options now? Well, DEM has cited the transfer station for numerous ongoing environmental violations. It finally mandated that the city provide a corrective action plan to address those egregious violations in order to get, to get a permit and remain in operation. The Grubbian administration has set forth some options for the city council to consider and approve. These options range from closing the facility and direct hauling garbage to Johnston, to building a new transfer station on Grotto Avenue, to constructing a waste to energy facility at Grotto Avenue. 
Option one, close and direct haul. I think that's what many people in Fairlong would like to see happen. Let's explain what that is. So the downside to closing this and direct hauling to Johnston are the cost to transport garbage to Johnston will be borne by taxpayers, the entire city. The real number is not clear, however. We need to have costs independently corroborated. They need to, we need to trust, but we also need to verify. Residents will not have an in-city dumping ground for mattresses, household items, um, and the city also won't have a place to dump waste from city buildings. Con there are concerns about an increase in illegal dumping citywide if the transfer station were to close. I think that's a very real possibility. I think that we see things illegally dumped now. I would assume that if there were no other options, it would probably get worse. The upside to closing and direct hauling. Fairlawn residents are no longer burdened with the detrimental impacts of having a transfer station in their neighborhood. No one wants this in their backyard. No one does. None of you on the council. No one who works for the city. You wouldn't want it in your yard, okay? Pawtucket is no longer stigmatized as the bucket. We really do have that moniker, and it's pretty much well deserved, I think, in some, in some instances, even though I love this city and I think it has some wonderful things. We are viewed as a bucket. Property values will not continue to erode. Fairwood may once again be one of the city's most desirable areas to live in and to raise a family. Many of us moved here because we really liked it here. We, we grew up here, we loved it. Um, I still love Fairlawn, but it's changed. Closing and direct hauling would also be a more congruent plan with many of the positive developments that are happening in Fairlawn. Um, Lorraine Mills, Miss Lorraine Diner, um, the investment in Nathaniel Green. There are a lot of positive things happening in this community, and we could build up momentum if we could close and direct haul and get rid of the monster that's on Grotto Avenue. Option two, continue operating the garbage transfer station at Grotto Avenue. So plan A, repair the existing facility. So there is a structure there. I'm using that word loosely, but there is a structure. And to bring the facility into compliance with Rhode Island DEM standards, the city would need to replace the transfer station floor, replace the siding and roof, stabilize the retaining walls, install a leachate collection system, replace overhead doors, and pave the road. Well, the road has been paved. The downside is that the estimated costs for upgrades are between $1.3 and $2.5 million, according to the Fuss and O'Neill report, report, which I have here if anyone wants to see it. Consider this. The figures were never independently corroborated and they seemed conflated. Case in point, the city had the road paved and the job's actual cost was about $120,000. The Fuss and O'Neill estimate, estimate was that it would be between $225,000 and $450,000. So it's quite a difference. Plan B, alternative number one. Build a new 12,500 square foot transfer station on the northern edge of the current Grotto Avenue site. It will be fully enclosed. It will operate and be it will be operated and maintained by WCI, which are the same players who brought us to the point that we're at right now. Okay? The city would own the facility at the end of the term, which is 10 years with an option to extend. The city would pay increased tipping fees to cover the cost of the new construction. And it is a new construction. It's not a rehabilitation. It is a new construction. The city keeps calling it a rehabilitation. It's not a rehabilitation. Noah Webster is rolling over in his grave if we're calling this a rehabilitation. This is a new facility. And so therefore, it also needs, if, if legislation that was passed a couple of years ago by Don and Essel Bush and Senator Goodwin applies, we need to look at the detrimental impact that something like this, building this type of facility, could have on the surrounding area. That's the law.
The downside to all of this is the same operator that ran the current transfer station into the ground and breached contract is given a long-term no-bid contract to operate and maintain the facility. Increased tipping fees is unclear. How much? What, what is that? The same issues with truck traffic, erosion of property values, and quality of life in the Fairlawn neighborhood, are, those, those are definitely going to be impacted. Plan B, alternative two, give WCI a long-term no-bid contract for essentially 15 years to build and maintain a 12,500 square foot garbage transfer station on the northern edge of Grotto Avenue site, of the Grotto Avenue site. WCI will process and transport Pawtucket solid waste and build the station at no cost to Pawtucket as long as WCI can accept 650 tons of garbage per day. The downside, the track record of this operator is poor on many levels and Fairlawn bears the burden solely for the city. For the city to have a transfer station, Fairlawn is disproportionately bearing a negative burden. Capacity is too high for a transfer station located in a densely populated urban neighborhood. There are detrimental impacts galore. When, I mean, we all know that there was a landfill in that area, there was an incinerator, now there's a transfer station, but the size and the capacity were never intended to be what this has become. And it's irresponsible of the city to even consider running something of that size in that area that borders a school and residential homes and businesses. It's just, it's, it's inconceivable that this is even being talked about. The no bid contract is illegal and it awards a vendor for poor performance. It's an insult to Fairlawn. I mean, the fact that this idea is even being floated is an insult. It would never be floated in Oak Hill or Pinecrest or Darlington. It just wouldn't. What is the benefit to the cities owning a transfer station when the Johnston landfill is set to close around the time that the term with WCI expires? 2034, they're saying that the transfer, that, that the landfill will be full and will need to close. What happens then? Waste Management and Tunnel Hill Partners, Tunnel Hill is the largest waste by rail company in the United States, might be interested in building a new facility on Grotto, but they too want increased capacity and long-term contracts in return. Why is the nation's largest waste by rail company interested in Pawtucket? Are we being set up to be garbage central for the region once the landfill closes? Is that the ultimate plan? Because if it is, can we just be honest about it and be transparent so people know what their lives are going to be impacted like? The Fuss and O'Neill report broaches the topic, in fact, of a 2,000 ton per day facility at Grotto Avenue with rail haul capability in a letter to acting director acting DPW Director Vieira. This was dated May 29, 2018. Why is it even mentioned in that report if it's not being considered or it's not the possible long-term plan? What's the end goal here? Where's the transparency? Option three is to construct a waste to energy facility at Grotto Avenue. This is really not even an option right now, um, but I'll explain what it is as far as I understand it. It's an approach whereby waste is converted to energy with a small amount of residual solid waste as a byproduct. A few companies have been approached and have shown interest. The downside of this is that it's new technology that requires further testing and vetting to be approved by DEM. It's not an immediate solution, not even, I'm sorry, immediate option. So I'm not even sure why it's included. Experts agree that there is increased road traffic of garbage trucks to transport municipal waste to waste energy facilities. So they are best suited to industrial areas, not to neighborhoods like Fairlawn that have residential homes, businesses, and an elementary school in proximity. Odor pollution, odor pollution fly ash, and bottom ash are produced. So quality of life, right? So despite WCI and the administration's claims that they will build a state-of-the-art garbage facility, which is an oxymoron, it will still be a garbage station. 
Garbage emits nox noxious odors, attracts rats and birds, and processing it generates dust and noise. It's just part of the business. The facility will continue to be a blight on the Fairlawn community and property values will continue to erode. Increased garbage tonnage capacity and attendant truck traffic will be detrimental to quality of life and put the health and safety of Fairlawn residents in jeopardy. Traffic. So increasing commercial traffic to an already congested area poses safety concerns. There have been 413 reported car accidents in the area leading from Route 95 to the Grotto Avenue site over the past three years. Increasing tonnage capacity will increase traffic and the likelihood of more accidents. A traffic study should be done to determine the detrimental impact that increasing tonnage at Grotto will have on Fairlawn and Woodlawn's main travel arteries, Smithfield Avenue and Mineral Spring. The traffic study for Compton Street revealed that, conservatively, it would have brought over 400 additional truck trips to the area per day. That was for a 2,000 ton per day facility. If this is a 650, you can do the math, probably end up with about another 125 truck trips per day to the area. That's on top of what we already have. The transfer station options are contingent upon WCI operating the facility. I mean, they're in, they are threaded throughout this proposal, through this proposal of options. It's WCI, WCI. Despite its status as a for-profit private business, WCI has allowed its Grotto Avenue facility to fall into disrepair. Why should we trust them to make resident safety and well-being a priority? Historically, they have not. Why would any city even entertain awarding a contract to a vendor with this type of track record? It just defies logic. These are some of the homes that surround the transfer station area. These are homes on Legion Drive. They're nicely maintained properties. The ones on Grotto are beautiful. They're well kept. They could easily fit in in any of your districts. They could fit in in Pinecrest, <coughs> Quality Hill, Oak Hill. City children and staff and teachers are in this building. This is our neighborhood school. And we have spent $13.7 million to renovate it, which I think is money well spent. But do we really want a garbage transfer station with hundreds of trucks coming by each day going in front of our schools. In fact, when I took this picture, I took it last Wednesday in the morning before I went to, to work, and as I was taking the photo, a garbage truck, a, a, one of the commercial trucks was driving by with no cover on it, speeding down, it actually slowed down because of the, the cameras, but that's what we're seeing every day. These are more neighboring homes. Families like yours live here. Children are being raised in these homes. This is a neighborhood. I understand that Pawtucket has industrial areas next to residential areas, but really, if you were to walk through this area, you would be impressed by how well maintained the homes are, how there are children playing in, 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 in the area. Children play in this park. It's a lovely park. It's one of the nicest things we have in Fairlawn. But there's a garbage dump right near it. People on this street pay the same property tax rate as everybody else in the city. But unlike residents of Pinecrest and Oak Hill and Countryside and Quality Hill, Fairlawn residents contend with this. Unlike the homes in your districts, the homes in this district have this in their backyard. These uncovered loads are readily accepted there. We see them going in and out. They're adding litter and noxious odors and rodents, and there's leachate. This is what it looks like. This retaining wall was allowed to disintegrate and collapse. This is the maintenance. This is the company that we want to give a long-term, no-bid contract to, to take care of the operations of Grotto Avenue and to maintain a facility that we're going to pay for one way or another. 
either through tipping fees or loss of quality of life in this area. This is in your, our backyard. This. Well, now they have, they've paved it, I guess. But this. And this. And this conveys so clearly the lack of responsibility of this vendor. And I will also add of the city in not holding this vendor accountable. This picture was taken on a weekend. This is supposed to be empty nightly according to contract. It's not. They don't follow the rules. <coughs> Why would any city build a transfer station in a heavy, heavily populated residential urban area? Why? Why are we thinking about this? <coughs> would you want this in your backyard? Any of you? Would you want this forced upon the people in your district, in the district that you represent? Would you want this forced upon your district? Here's a listing of people you can call. You can go to the city website. Everybody on the council is, is listed there. Call the mayor. Um, call our representatives at the state level, neither of whom are here tonight. They were invited. But I would definitely contact them. That ends the presentation, but I would like to have a discussion if anyone has any comments.